My name is Devin Phillips. Today we're going to talk about how you can leverage Maven archetypes to ensure consistency and compliance in your Java application development. Let's begin by talking about what a Maven archetype is. Maven archetypes are a way to create a template of a Maven project so that you can reproducibly create similar projects over and over and over. Within a Maven archetype, you can use velocity templating, templating on your files, which means you can substitute in variables and you can put some basic logic into those files so that you can generate Java class files that match your package requirements and things like that. You can also template your readme files, your database migration files, your logging configurations, any text file that would be part of your generated application from the archetype can be templated so that you can regenerate that over and over and over again. Additionally, you can set up your Maven POM file, your project file, with the plugins and configurations and settings and common dependencies that you're going to use consistently in all of your applications or typically in all of your applications. What's really nice about Maven archetypes is that creating them is relatively easy. If you have an existing Maven project that embodies your preferred standards for your applications, you can use the Maven colon create dash from dash project target in order to turn your existing application into a repeatably usable archetype. So today, we're going to start off by me showing you how we could create a Quarkus application, then add our personal customizations to it, and then convert that to a Maven archetype. So I'm going to start off by going to code.quarkus.io. I'm going to set the group ID to be com my company, and I'm going to set the artifact to be Quarkus archetype. And of course, we're going to use Maven as our build. I'm going to zoom in a little here so it's easier. to read. We're also going to want to use JAXRS because we're going to be creating REST APIs. We're going to use Jackson for our JSON serialization. We're going to use Uh, Panache for our database access. So we're going to use Hibernate ORM with Panache. And we're also going to want Small Riot Open API so that we can document our APIs with Open API slash Swagger annotations. So that's our new Quarkus application. I'm going to generate that. I'm going to download the zip file. Here is our newly generated Quarkus application and the associated Maven POM file. Let's say, for example, that we want to use certain Maven plugins with our Quarkus application so that we can be more effective. I'm going to add a plugin for SonarCube. so that we can automatically scan our code with a uh, static code analysis scanner. Uh, I'm also going to add a plugin for PyTest, which is a mutation testing coverage tool. Uh, so PyTest will take our existing tests and will rerun them using mutation modifications of our code to find out if our tests are of sufficiently high quality. We could also add in certain libraries. We could set various versions. You'll notice that we're using Java 11. Uh, we're using a certain version of the Maven compiler plugin. All of these things can be customized. We can also see that we have Docker files, we have Java, we have a greeting resource. 
let's say we didn't want the green resource. Let's say we wanted all of our projects to have instead a health endpoint. And we want that path to be health Z. And we're going to return Just as a starting point for all of our applications, it's going to have a health endpoint that returns status OK. In addition, we might want to set some default application properties. Let's say we always want to use uh, certain logging settings or whatever. We could put those in here into this application property. And once we get this project set up exactly the way we want our projects to be set up going forward, we can then open the terminal inside of our project and we can run maven archetype colon create from project. And once we've generated that archetype, we can then go into source or actually target generated sources archetype and we'll see that there's a new Maven project here. So if we open our new archetype project, you'll see that under source main resources, we have all of the information that was in our original project. So let's remove the IntelliJ folder. We want to keep the .maven folder with the wrapper properties and the maven wrapper downloader so that we can use maven wrapper. Uh, let's delete the IntelliJ configuration file. Um, and what we can do is if we look in here under source main Java, you'll see our health resource.java file without any of the package subdirectories. When we open that up, you'll see that Maven Archetype has converted this to a class that has velocity templating in it. So it's basically saying that when we generate a new project from this archetype, we're going to automatically populate this package. Well, how does it know which files to automatically create package directories for and things like that? Well, down here under meta-inf archetype metadata, we have defined a number of file sets. And you'll see that source main Java and any file ending with the .java extension is filtered. That means we run it through the velocity templating engine and packaged, meaning that it will create the Java package directory structure for those files. But you'll see in other file sets that we're only doing filtering or we're not doing filtering or packaging at all, depending on the files. And we can go in here after we've deleted some of those files, like the, the IntelliJ files and whatnot, we need to remove those file sets from in here as well. So for example, we don't want the IntelliJ IDEA configuration files. <clears throat> we don't want the sonar lint information. We don't want the idea to get ignore information. Uh, we don't want the IML file, so on and so forth. Anything that we don't want to include, we just remove it from those file sets. In addition to that, if you really wanted to, you could also create a new groovy script uh, called archetype post generate dot groovy and we can put that in the meta inf directory and what we could do if we wanted to in our maven archetype is anything we can write as a groovy script can be added to this 
and we can modify things that maybe wouldn't work as well inside of our velocity templates or in our files. So for example, uh, we could in our archetype, we could define a new property. So we go in here into our archetype metadata. And we would say uh, required property. And under required properties, we would create a new required property that has a key of extra libraries for example. Now these keys for these Maven archetype properties have to be without dots in them. Uh, if they're dotted notation, they won't get substituted properly by velocity. And we can optionally set a default value. And I'm going to set the default value to empty. And if we generate a new project from this archetype and we set that, no, actually, let's set that to additional dependencies as the property. And we set that additional dependencies and we use, say, the, uh, the Gradle style dependency format that this is going to parse. It will add those dependencies to our Maven POM file for us when we generate the project. So now that we've customized our POM to do exactly what we want it to do, let's try it out. And the way we can do that locally is that we can do Maven install. And you'll notice that we got an error. It's saying that we missed a required properties in the archetype properties directory. What that's telling us is that when you do the install, the archetype wants to run a test of the archetype before it will install. And when it runs that test, it wants to run it using some particular properties. And that's in this test resources projects.basic archetype.properties. So we would need to add our additional dependencies value and we could leave it blank, but I'm actually going to put an example bit of data in here. So I'm going to tell it to uh, include some libraries to enable SLF for J, for example. So you'll see there's a comma here between these. It's kind of hard to, to read, maybe. But I have three dependencies here. We have org.slf4j, which is the group ID. We have the slf4j-api, which is the artifact ID, and then the version. And then over here, you'll see that we have org Apache logging log4j, log4j to slf4j, then the version. But we also have this extra field that says the scope is runtime. So we can do either of those. And our groovy archetype post-generate script will automatically add those dependencies to our POM file when we generate. So let's do name and install. And you'll see that the test ran successfully. And if we look in target under test classes, projects, basic, you'll see that it generated our project. And if we look at the POM file in that project, we'll see down here near the bottom, uh, yeah, you'll see that it added our two dependencies that we specified when we generated the project from the properties. Now we can do something very similar when we generate from the command line. Now that the archetype is installed, I 
can go into my temp directory and I can say maven archetype for generate dash d archetype ID. and this is going to be the group ID in my generated POM file on my company. So if I put an equal sign there and we say dash d archetype artifact id corpus archetype archetype <laughs> uh and dash d archetype version 1.0 dash snapshot Now, if we wanted to specify our parameters at the command line, we could go with dash D um, package equals com my company project, for example. But if we don't specify any of those properties and we just press enter, Maven will prompt us to fill in the required values that don't have default ID. So we can say com.mycompany.neworcus. And we can say my cool orcus app. And we can give it our preferred version. Uh, we can choose the base package name. And if we wanted to, we could add some additional dependencies. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that because it's gonna prompt me and let me. And it says, hey, are these values correct? And if they are, you can generate the project. And if we go into my Google Orcus app, we'll see in the POM file that it set the group ID as we expected, the artifact ID as we expected, the version as we expected. It added our custom dependencies just like we wanted it to. And you'll see that it put all of our generated classes in the correct packages for our new application. That's how quickly and easily you can build a new Maven archetype that you can use to standardize your application development throughout your entire organization. I hope you found this helpful. And feel free to reach out if you have any suggestions for improvement in the future.